Women in the sense of hypergamy are always looking for the best option. So you just simply have to be her best option. So we, today we want to talk to you a little bit about the idea, the concept, and it's a very real concept called hypergamy. You probably heard other influencers talk about it. You probably have a general understanding of what it is. And most people talk about hypergamy as if it's a negative thing, and it's really not. So the idea or what hypergamy actually is, is women are generally going to be more attracted to and more likely to mate with men that are of higher value in socioeconomic statue, in social statue, they're more likely to date up. That's all it means. And it makes sense. If you're a woman, you're going to look for the best option you can. Often people think of it as an evil word, but these are the seven things that you need to do in order to level up as a man to basically become her best option. That's what you're looking for. In order to be attract a high level woman, it would make sense that you need to be a high level man. If you are not on your path and purpose, if you're not doing these seven things, you're only going to attract low level women. That's just how it is. That's how hypergamy is. My name is Jared Schumacher with Magnetic Men's Club. Thank you so much for watching this video. So the very first thing that you need to do is very general concept, but basically get your life in order. And what does that mean? Getting your life in order can mean a couple different things. The very first one is you gotta remove toxic people from your life. If you're constantly going out with your buddies who are you know, just out drinking, having a good time, not really talking about money, not talking about goals, not talking about furthering themselves. You need to remove them because you are who you associate with. You show me your five friends, I'll show you exactly who you are. And that's dead honest truth. The other thing you need to do in order to get your life together is to set goals for yourself, set goals and then execute them. You know, if you're in a rut and you're, you're having problems, women noticing you, you need to start coming, folding back on yourself and not worrying about that so much and do things for yourself that will make women notice you. So what could that be? You might have a basic job. Maybe you're working, I don't know, a nine to five. You're not making great money. Start re-educating yourself into things that you enjoy doing, things that you're good at, so you can get a better job or start a business. If you're a little bit overweight, again, you can start going to the gym. You want to set goals for yourself and then execute them. Women love, I'm gonna say this again, women love a man on his purpose. They love a man with goals. They love a man with hustle, even more than a man who's good looking. Got to remember, women judge a man's beauty differently than we do. So you got to get on, get your life together. Another way to get your life together is just taking responsibility for your life as it is now. Taking responsibility for the things you've done wrong and working better or working hard to correct those mistakes to become a better person. So an example of this would be if, again, you're out living for the weekend and you're no better off than you were 18 and you're 34 and you're still doing the same thing, how can you attract a high value woman? It doesn't make any sense. You need to get rid of those toxic traits that you have, recognize them, take responsibility for them, and then move forward. The second key thing that you need to do in order to increase your advantage against hypergamy is just become what we just say a high value man. And you just have to increase your value. And what are some of those things? Well, the first one is to provide value. Give of yourself, give your talents, give your insight to people. Become a giver, not a taker. When you're able to give value to somebody without 
giving it back or all, without trying to get something back from them, you're increasing your value as a man. Be useful. Um, if you're not really good at, at, at different things, I'm going to use the example because a lot of men, modern men, are not good really at fixing stuff. They're not, they don't even know how to change a tire. They don't know how to change their own oil. This is a basic example, but become useful. You know, we as men like to fix things. We like to be able to take a problem or a solution, look at it and do our best to correct it. So become of use to people, learn a trade, learn basic automotive repair, learn basic carpentry, basic stuff that you can do. There's thousands of YouTube videos. So one of the ways you can do this is if maybe you own a house and you're always used to hiring a handyman, something breaks, just go on YouTube and see how it gets fixed. Buy some basic tools and fix it yourself. Once you learn how to fix something once, you'll always know how to do it. It's a skill that cannot be taken away from you. So be of use, be useful. Another thing to increase your value as, as a man is just have a positive mental attitude. Again, we talk about ne negative Nancy's, we're talking about uh, men who constantly bitch and complain and they tear other men down in order for them to bring themselves up. Have a positive mental attitude. No matter what happens in your life, always look for the positive. And I'm not saying this as a pie in the sky. Oh, Jerry, just be happy. No, no, no. Happiness has nothing to do with this. Have an attitude about yourself that is positive so that other people attract to you. Nobody wants to be attracted to somebody who's always b bitching and nagging and complaining. So have a positive mental attitude. Learn to appreciate the things that are working in your life, the things that are good in your life. And then take the things that you want to change and start working on them. And then really the final thing I'm increasing your values, man, is just be accountable. If you say you're going to do something, you owe it to yourself to, to actually do that thing, not to other people. We always hear it a lot. We talk about guys who are like, oh, one day I'm going to be the CEO or I'm going to have this body or I'm, I'm going to do these things. And they don't do them. Your best friend looks at him like, dude, you drink every fucking night. What, what are you talking about? He's not accountable to himself. Be accountable. The third one is in actually increasing your odds of beating hypergamy is really just focusing on yourself. Don't worry about what women are doing or what your friends are doing. Focus on yourself. Focus on what you want. What do you want out of life? Remember, we all only have one life. We all get to go around one time. So living for yourself, doing the things that you want to do, is very attractive to women. It lets them know that you can stand on your own. It lets them know that you are your own person and you don't just kind of go with the crowd. You do the things that you want to do. Another one on focusing on yourself is, again, you focus on yourself and you don't compare yourself to others. Comparing yourself to others is the instant recipe to start feeling depressed, to start feeling anxious, to start going backwards because there's always going to be better looking guys than us. There's always going to be guys with more money. There's always going to be guys with higher social networks. If you look for it, you will find it. So don't even look for that. Don't look externally to what other people are doing. Look to what you're doing. You want to be your best self. The first three again is getting your life together, increasing your own value and focusing on yourself. The fourth advantage or the, the fourth skill that you need to do in order to beat hypergamy is to become a protector and a provider. Now, what does that mean? So being a protector, getting your body in shape, looking the part, taking care of yourself, lets women know that by and large, you can at least protect her. Fighting is a good, another one. Now, learning a martial art, learning boxing, learning some type of a skill 
that you can also protect yourself and protect your loved ones. Now I'm going to preface this by saying it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to learn to fight, but are you willing to fight? Often guys, you know, they run their mouths and they talk their shit, they talk their game, but at the end of the day, they're really not willing to fight. They talk a big game, but they won't back it up. You want to be a guy who even if he can't fight, he's going to fucking try. And he might lose, but he's also going to have respect from the guy he just fought because the guy knows, well, this dude's not backing down. You stand on your own ground. That is what being a protector is. You stand your own ground. When push comes to shove and the shit hits the fan, you're going to spring into action and do what you can do in order to protect yourself and the people around you. The second part of that is to be a good provider. Now, I hear this all the time where, you know, you, you, men talk about all women want is money. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's 100% true. Not in the sense of they're gold diggers. You can sense a gold digger a mile away. Women want a man who has the ability to generate income. Because you gotta think about it this way. If a woman gets pregnant and she has to leave the workforce for a period of time, she wants to know, feel safe, feel secure, that you're able to you know, basically pay 80 to 90% of the bills while she is on maternity leave. Or if she decides, hey, I wanna stay and raise our kid for a few years. So it makes sense that she's looking for a guy who has the ability to make more money. And this is why women, I would say all, but generally most women date up on the income scale. You're not gonna have a CEO of a company, a female CEO making 120, $300,000 a year, whatever it is, dating a bus driver. It's just not gonna happen. She might sport fuck them. They might date a little bit, but she's not gonna take them seriously. They're in two different classes. In order to get that higher value, that higher income woman, her pool becomes a lot smaller. So you need to actually make more. Generally it's 20 to 30% more than her for her to even kind of feel like, okay, th this guy actually makes more than me. It is a very important concept that you need to understand and not take it to heart that this woman doesn't date me because I'm ugly. This person doesn't date me because I'm not a good guy. You don't make enough money. That's plain and simple. The other part of resource is resourcefulness. How good at you are accumulating resources? How good at you thinking on your feet? Are you good at pivoting? If the market goes down, are you good at pivoting a different way in order to keep those resources coming in? This is a skill that everybody can learn, but few people even try. They, they basically, something happens to them that causes them a setback. They sit back and they don't look at other opportunities that are in front of them that they can pivot to in order to create a better life for themselves. So you have to be resourceful. The resourcefulness side actually is more important than the income side. Being a good protector and provider, if you have these two skills on lock, it's going to help or going to level up your game as an advantage to hypergamy. The fifth advantage or the fifth skill you need to learn in order to gain an advantage on hypergamy is having strong values. Having strong values, and that basically means the things that are important to you, you do. The things that you value as a man, you cultivate and do. An example of that is we, all, we talked in a couple videos where we have our real self and we have our ideal self and in the middle is self-awareness. It's developing self-awareness. We think we're this, well, ideally we're that. And in the middle is self-awareness, your values. Yeah, I go to the gym all the time. I, I you know, I, I'm not, I'm not gaining muscle. I'm the same place I was, you know, a year ago. The real self is, yeah, 
but every night I go watch football and drink beer with the guys and eat chicken wings. And when I do go to the gym, it's 20 minutes of cardio and looking at girls, getting the self-awareness, understanding I'm really not going to the gym. I'm kind of fucking around and I'm not taking my diet serious. So you don't really value at this particular thing. You're not really valuing yourself. So you have to understand what you really value and then do that thing. The sixth one is really just stop simping. We t I've done plenty of videos on simping. It's liking, hearting, commenting on women you don't even know or women that you would never even talk to if you met in person on Facebook, Instagram, any of these social channels. It is just doing things for women with the hopes that you can get in their pants. It is being a people pleaser. Stop simping. The simp of the world, which is most guys, unfortunately, the women do not respect that type of attribute. They do not want to simp. If you are a simp, there's other videos you can take a look at. I've identified what a simp is. We're not gonna go to it in this video, but stop the simping. And then really the other one is become scarce. Number seven is become scarce. And we talked about that in the sense of attention. Get low for a while. Quit going out. Become a scarce commodity. Start your hustle. Start your grind. You grind in private. Start building up yourself. And then pop out every once in a while. I guarantee you, if six months from now, you started going to the gym, you stopped drinking, you start really focusing on your career, maybe learn a new skill, and then you pop up in six months, women are going to notice you. They're going to be like, oh my God, Jared, you, what the hell? You, you know, six months ago, I haven't seen you around. You look great. What are you doing? And then you can kind of tell them what you've been up to. This creates scarcity. You're not always around. It's like that fucking toaster analogy I bring up. If you're always the toaster in the kitchen and the girl always gets a piece of toast, it's nothing. Oh, put the toaster, put the toast in, no big deal, the toast is there. That fucking toaster breaks. She looks around, fuck, the toaster's gone. Now the toaster's scarce, it doesn't work anymore. Create scarcity. That might be a dumb analogy, but we're always used to uh, men just being there. We're just there remove yourself from situations and then people will start noticing, hey, where did Tom go? Where did, where did Jared go? Where, where did these guys go? And then pop up as a better version of yourself. Women in the sense of hypergamy are always looking for the best option. So you just simply have to be her best option. It's as simple as that. Hypergamy is not a bad thing. It just is what it is. It's female nature. My name is Jared Schumacher. This is Magnetic Men's Club. If you found this video helpful, please uh, throw a comment down below. Subscribe to this channel. Like us. We definitely appreciate your feedback on this. If you have an idea for a video you'd like us to talk about, please share that with us as well. We'll talk soon.